So uh, my name is Alexandra Wallow. I teach Ukrainian at the University of Kansas. And today I'll be talking a little bit about a relatively new open access uh, resource for learning basic Ukrainian grammar. It's called Dobra Forma, Good Form in English. And this is the website um, that is already accessible with about 75% of the resource fully accessible. Um, the project is uh, currently being developed under the auspices of the University of Kansas Open Language Resource Center. Um, and I'm the author. I don't have uh, full-time collaborators, but I have uh, been relying uh, on the kind help of uh, graduate and undergraduate students, as well as the OLRC at the University of Kansas, um, who have been wonderful in helping with the technical side of this project. So this is a resource um, that covers the fundamentals of Ukrainian grammar, usually taught in first year courses of Ukrainian. It has a modular structure uh, that allows instructors and students to pick and choose from a variety of grammar topics um, to supplement existing curricula. So uh, this is not a standalone textbook. Um, it really is a supplement um, to existing curricula. And I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see the topics that are already available here on the side. As you can see, we divide them all by grammar categories, by parts of speech, um, cases, et cetera. Um, so far, we're finding out, because there are quite a few users of this website already, so, so far we're finding out that this uh, resource works particularly well for false beginners in Ukrainian, students who already have a knowledge of another Slavic language like Russian, uh, heritage learners, as well as intermediate level students who need to review, go back and review some um, Ukrainian grammar. Uh, when fully complete, this resource will have uh, about 100 modules, and they're grouped into 30 units. And so far on the website, we have 24 of these units, which is about 75 modules um, covering a variety of topics. And the, the entire resource will be uh, completed by September of 2021, so pretty soon. Um, but everyone can already go and use the resources that are all already on the website. So a few words about why I developed this. Um, as you might know, uh, as a Slavic language, Ukrainian is a very difficult language, quite difficult for uh, to acquire for uh, learners whose native language is English. Um, and it is particularly the grammar that is very difficult. Uh, Ukrainian, for instance, has seven cases, uh, a complex verb system with two conjugations, and then within uh, each of those groups there are further variations, um, and also it has a tricky notion of aspect. So even though we already have some very good first-year Ukrainian textbooks on the market, including one OER uh, developed by colleagues uh, from Canada, um, I always find that my students need more practice with grammar. And usually uh, they need something that they can access at home, uh, outside of class, so we don't spend class time on grammar work, uh, and something that will be uh, hopefully interactive and meaningful and will engage them in this further exploration and learning of Ukrainian grammar um, in a meaningful way. So this is why I developed this resource. Um, a little bit about the pedagogical approach, and then we'll go into one module and I'll show you around a little bit. Um, and in fact, I'll go into the module now. Um, we'll look at verbs and we'll look at one verb module um, that's about the present tense. And I hope you can see as I click on the website, you can see uh, things happening. Yes. Good, great. So um, the modules consist of contextualized input and output activities. Um, they're structured in such a way as to encourage students to process um, uh, everything for meaning as well as for form. So we encourage them to map form to meaning. Uh, we introduce things very gradually. Um, so I'll give you an example here. 
um, this, this particular unit, 21, is on the present tense of verbs. And in Ukrainian, um, there are six endings for the present tense for first, second, third person singular and first, second, third person plural. In addition to that, all verbs are divided into two big groups, two conjugations, and then there's further complexities, exceptions, and variations within each group. And in uh, regular curricula, all of this is presented at once to students as paradigms and charts. And then it's very difficult to get students to actually internalize these forms. So I take uh, the processing instruction approach um, kind of developed most fully by Van Patten and Lee where um, I break up the paradigms and try as much as possible to uh, explain one thing at, um, things one thing at a time, or it's not always possible in Slavic languages, at least a few things at a time. So in this particular module, students uh, are first introduced only to two forms in the present tense. So in this first task, you see two students that are discussing their plans for the summer or, uh, and what they are doing in the summer. Um, and you see that there are only two present tense forms being introduced um, in a dialogue in context. And then the dialogue is followed up by questions that are both content questions and grammar questions. And the grammar questions encourage students to pay attention to, to form. And here is an example of one grammar question. Um, everything is machine graded. Students receive um, automatic feedback uh, to what they have done. And this, of course, uh, makes this useful for students who are learning independently for homework, um, for independent review. This frees up uh, time in the classroom for meaningful communication, which is what we should be doing in the classroom anyway, um, whether via Zoom or in person. Um, and in that way, it's a helpful resource, I think. Um, the activities, so then the, these broken down paradigms are practiced again in these chunks. And some exceptions, some important information is highlighted in these text boxes as this one called Vajlevo, important. And then uh, there is a variety of activities where students manipulate forms, uh, again, processing everything both for meaning and for form. So in this one, they have to arrange uh, lines of the dialogue in the correct order and they have to read carefully and think about the meaning and the form as they do so. And then uh, as we go on, um, there are uh, drag and drop activities. And I'll show you one. Here's one, task four, where there is a dialogue and students have to uh, drag and drop verb forms. Um, again, only two types of forms here, but on two types of endings, but attached to different verbs. And in order to complete this activity, students have to read the dialogue, understand the meaning, as well as pay attention to form, um, which um, again is, is my approach to these materials. Um, there is also oral input, um, oral ac activities, listening activities. Um, and uh, every module uh, concludes with two types of activities. One is a kind of, we call it a language puzzle, money puzzle where students have to put everything that they have learned in the module together, and they have to answer some true and false questions about this grammar. And then there is a test. And in the test, this is where output comes in. Students already have to demonstrate their um, understanding, at least, of this grammar point by um, typing in correct grammar forms. In this case, we have a dialogue. We have a, a verb bank. Uh, so students have to choose from these verbs, which are listed in the infinitive, and uh, before they fill in any blank, they have to think both about the meaning of the sentence and the form, of course, uh, of the form of the present tense that they have to use. And again, this is machine graded. Um, so at the end, they click check to see how well they have done. Now, at this point, um, the website does not uh, does not have the capability to um, register how each student completes this work. But what I do with my students is I ask them to um, complete the module, then complete the test, hit on this check button, and make sure that they have gotten everything right. And if they haven't, to go back and correct, self-correct, and make sure they 
they complete the test with 100 percent uh, correct answers and they take a screenshot then they take a screenshot and they email me the screenshot to prove that they have completed this module let's say for homework um, so each module takes anywhere between eight and 15 minutes to complete uh, depending on the level of the student and the complexity of the topic uh, all modules, uh, the entire website is uh, accessible on a mob mobile device. So students uh, theoretically could be sitting on the bus to class and uh, practicing Ukrainian grammar uh, on their phones. And I have seen students do this, on buses, which is quite nice to see. Another feature of uh, this resource is that uh, I based all of the input in all of these modules on 1,000 most commonly used and frequently taught in elementary Ukrainian words. Um, and I kind of arrived at this 1,000 by working with Ukrainian frequency lists, checking them, uh, cross-checking them with uh, the Ukrainian corpus, as well as the uh, current Ukrainian textbooks on the market, first year textbooks, just to make sure that this will be compatible with these textbooks and um, that students who are novice level students will be able to complete these modules. And there is a high likelihood that most of these words will be known to them already. The focus really is on acquiring um, grammar, not acquiring vocabulary, although the hope is, of course, that as you complete more and more of these modules, you will also internalize some of this vocabulary as well. Um, and uh, a final note is that all of this will be completed, as I said, by September 2021. The website has been live already for about 13 months. Uh, and uh, it, it has gotten some use already. Uh, we are tracking through uh, Google Analytics who is using the website, in what countries. And um, it, it's, it's looking good. There are quite a few users in the United States, uh, quite a few in Canada, some in Poland, some in Ukraine. And uh, as the resource becomes more complete and we deal with all of the little bugs, in it and make sure everything is typo free, et cetera. I think more and more students and learners will be um, coming back to it and using it in the future. Um, so that is all for me. I tried to be very brief and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, I'll leave my email in the chat and I will also leave the link to the resource in the chat if um, anyone is interested to explore it. Thank you very much. Yeah, so we used uh, WordPress uh, for the website and then the interactive activities are done with H5P.